Hey guys, my name is Anthony and in today's installment of my Track Guys series, I'm going to be showcasing I'm going to be showcasing one of the most difficult tracks on the calendar, one of the most difficult tracks in motorsport in general, to be honest, and that is Belgium uh, Spa. So if you want to see more Track Guys like this, then make sure to click the top right hand side of the screen, it will take you to a playlist of all the Track Guys I've already done, and then if you want to see more Track Guys in the future but you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the like button and stick around by subscribing to the channel. So let's get straight into it. So we're here now right in front of the famous bus stop chicane and you'll see in my hot lap that I lost a lot of time on the exit of this uh, chicane corner here. It's pretty difficult to really hook up a lot of the time. So you want to be in 8th gear and you want to break just before the 100 meter board here. You want to break in a complete straight line down into 3rd gear and then as you're turning into the corner one last downshift into 2nd gear then you sort of want to attack this curb here and get the best exit that you can. Car is a little bit oversteer on exit, so be careful. Uh, open up DRS as soon as possible. And here we go, starting the lap. We're coming up to the first corner now. We want to break pretty much just before the 100 meter board at the 100 meter board. If the 100 meter board for any sort of reason gets destroyed during the race or qualifying, then you can use the white line right in front of me as reference to break. You want to be in seventh gear, break in a complete straight line down into third gear then down into second gear and then one last downshift into first gear as you're coming to the corner try and get a sort of late apex approach so you can really get the the best amount of exit that you can because pretty much the rest of sector one is completely flat out and then coming off the exit here you want to come out wide but just be careful with how you apply throttle if you're not using traction control because the car can sort of just kick out on you the rear end will just snap and spin out on you so you want to be careful with that so apply the throttle carefully make sure to short shift to minimize wheel spin and then coming up to what's arguably the two most famous corners on the track el rouge and radion i believe it's called uh correct me if i'm wrong there but uh coming up to el rouge now you want to sort of cut this corner here cut this curb and then coming up to Radion, as I said, I don't know if that's the actual name. You want to hug this curb here. And then coming up to the left hander, you sort of want to cut the curb there just to get the best line through. And as I said, all of that is flat out. Open up DRS as soon as possible. And then you've pretty much just got a long straight here. So you can literally, you know, you can literally go and grab a snack whilst you're on this straight. It's that long. But coming into this next corner now, just before the 50 meter board. Uh, in qualifying and in the race if you feel comfortable enough you want to come out wide onto this curb and you want to start breaking in a straight line on this curb if you don't feel comfortable then you can just stick to the road that's fine you're not going to lose uh, a huge amount of time in just in front of the 50 meter board not this close you want to be a little bit further back sorry uh breaking a complete straight line you're going to be in eighth gear you want to shift down into fifth gear and then as you're turning into the corner one last down shift into fourth ride this curb then ride this curb as well try not to invalidate your lap you can invalidate your lap pretty easily there and then you sort of want to turn in here hug this curb go out wide without invalidating your lap and then coming up to this curb here this corner here you want to break in seventh gear just as you're hitting this curb then down into third and once again as usual one last downshift into second just to get the car rotated in short shift up to fourth on exit fifth gear then you want to sort of ride on this curb here on the on the outside then Swoop the car into the inside without invalidating the lap, and then again on the outside here. That's going to get you the most time through there. And then coming up to this fast corner in eighth gear, shift down once to seventh gear, throw the car in, apply throttle again, and then use the downforce of the car to really get you around that corner. Very difficult corner to get right, but uh, very satisfying when you do. And then coming up to this corner now, see the 50 meter board. Um, I would rather use the actual curb because the 50 meter board can be destroyed by other drivers and stuff like that. So you want to be in 7th gear or 8th gear when you hit this curb. Then shift down into 5th gear. Then use 5th gear to sort of ride this curb here. You want to hug the inside like this. And then downshift into 4th. Attack this corner right over that green patch. And then come out wide. Try not to invalidate your lap. And then just before you hit this curb here, you want to shift down into 4th. And then one last downshift into 3rd. Hug this inside here on that green patch, come out wide, and then stay out wide so that you can attack this corner as best as you can. And then the rest of this lap up until the bus stop chicane is pretty much flat out. If you're not using the racing line, I highly recommend you follow the dark patch here. This is going to give you the ideal line 
through sector 3 here. And then once again, coming up to the bus stop chicane, you want to break just before or just on the 100 meter board in 8th gear, in a straight line, breaking down into 3rd gear, one last downshift into 2nd, sort of trying to tack this final chicane uh, just to get the best exit possible, open up the DRS, and there you go, that is a lap of spa so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the lap that you see in the title there and then we're going to move on to the setup Hey guys, so as you've seen from that hot lap, could have gotten into the 41s pretty easily, but I lost most of my time at the final chicane on exit. It is a pretty difficult corner, so this is a pretty difficult track in general, so don't get too discouraged if you're struggling with this track. It's generally one of the most difficult tracks on the calendar. So getting into the setup now, I've gone with 3-5 wings. Usually, you want to go with 2-5 wings. A lot of people do go with 2-5 wings. Me personally, I go with 3-5 wings because... Sector 2, in my opinion, is the most important sector on the track. And I just didn't feel as if the car had enough turn in really for me. So that's why I've gone with 3.5 and 3.5 works pretty well. You can go with 3.6. I wouldn't recommend it though because you are losing a lot of straight line speed going from Sector 1 and Sector 3. So the transmission, 50 and 60 for the on and off throttle uh, differential. The reason why I've gone with 50 is because there's a lot of corners where you're going to be sort of really attacking the corners and using the throttle quite a lot during those corners. For example, that left-hander just after no name. Uh, I don't really know the name of this corner, but uh, basically you want to just uh, throw the car in, lift off, and then put your foot right back on the throttle. And you really need the car to be able to rotate in situations like that. So that's why I've gone with the 50. Um, and 60 to 65 is pretty much standard when it comes to F1 2020 for the off dif uh, throttle differential. So moving on to the suspension geometry, we've got a lower camber than usual, but it's still going with the regular char characteristics of a high camber and a low toe. So you can just, uh, you can sort of tinker around with it, see maybe what works for you. This pretty much works for me, so it should work for you guys. Suspension, I've gone with 1, 3, 4, 8, and 2, 4. Uh, you can attack the curbs quite aggressively on this one, but at the same time, you don't want to have the ride height too low. You don't really want to use, <clears throat> sorry, you don't really want to use 3.5. Reason being is because you're just going to be losing too much straight line speed, in my opinion. So I've gone with 2.4. And then 4.8 for the anti roll bar, just to get the car really rotated through sector 2. And 1.3 suspensions, once again, you're going to be sort of attacking a lot of curbs on this track, so you want to have soft suspension springs. And then moving on to the brakes. Brakes, again, are subjective, but I've got the T3PA pedals for anyone who was wondering, and this is the setup that I've gone with. If you've got a load cell, maybe you've got the Thrustmaster TLCMs, or maybe you've got Fanatec, uh, your probably brake pressures and front brake biases are going to be a little bit different. And then moving on to the tyres. 
23.4 on the right front right 23.0 on the front left and then 20.7 on the rear tires now the reason why i've gone slightly lower on the front left is because this is a clockwise track meaning that most of the pressure uh, is going to be on the front left so i've made it a little bit softer so that it can sort of handle the weight that it's going to be uh getting throughout the track when i'm turning and turning in corners and stuff like that so that's pretty much the setup if you want to see more track guides like this then make sure to click the link at the top right hand side of the screen that will take you to a playlist of all the track guides that i've already done and then if you want to see the track guides that i'm going to be doing in the future because i'm going to be doing track guides for every track and then i'm even going to do one in wet conditions so that you guys can get good setups for wet condition racing then make sure to hit the like button and stick around by subscribing to the channel if you're new we just hit 700 subscribers so honestly i can't thank you guys enough for the support that the channel's been getting since f1 2020 came out um, on, honestly, I feel blessed. So thank you very much. And I'll see you guys in my next video.